grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We welcome you to worship on this fourth Sunday after Pentecost. I want to turn your attention briefly to the announcements that are found at the back of the bulletin today. Um, there is a thank you note um, from Dr. Brad Davidson for all those who participated in the Pride um, Parade last week. Um, many thanks to all of you who helped to make that a success as we um, marched with our brothers and sisters at Grace, UConn, and also St. Paul's Cathedral. Also, a reminder that next Sunday, the 10th, we have our Pizza with the Priest after this liturgy. So if you're interested in finding out more about this congregation, what's taking place, or what it means to be an Episcopalian, I encourage you to be a part of the Pizza with the Priest at 1230 next Sunday. If you need more information, please be in touch with our own Sarah Emily Steinhardt. Also remind you, next Sunday we'll have our UTO, or United Thank Offering, in the gathering. Um, and those of you who've been collecting spare change over the past year in those little blue construction um, um, boxes, those little cardboard boxes, um, it's an opportunity to, to, to turn all of that spare change in. You know, um, Episcopalians around the world and those who are part of the worldwide Anglican communion have been gathering that, that loose change. And that loose change adds up and makes a big difference. And it helps with mission and ministry around the world through the, the wonderful Anglican communion. So be sure to, to bring your loose change in. If you don't have one of the blue um, cardboard boxes, there are some available in the comments area. Or maybe you'll just simply want to write a check and put on the memo line that it's to UTO, United Bank Offering. Also remind you on the 17th and the 24th, we have our intergenerational uh, VBS. Um, it's entitled Monumental this year. So at the 1045 service um, on July the 17th and also the 24th, um, intergenerational VBS is always lots of fun. So be sure to mark that on your calendar and be prepared to have fun inside and outside the church on those two Sundays. And then finally, one other thing I want to note, Ignatian Group Forming, um, beginning next Sunday, the 10th and also the 17th of July at 9.35. There will be information sessions um, that will be facilitated by our own um, Father Tony Moon. Um, that Ignatian Group will gear up the 1st of August. So if you're interested in developing your spiritual life or deeper prayer life, uh, we invite you to be a part of the two information sessions or you can be in contact with Father Tony to find out more information. Other announcements, other things that are taking place in the life of this congregation are noted there um, on the announcement sheet in the back of your bulletin. Now, as we prepare to worship God in the beauty of holiness, let us affirm the mission statement of this congregation as it's found at the bottom of the front cover of your bulletin in English and Spanish. Together. We are an enthusiastically welcoming and inviting Christian community committed to the unity of all people with God through Christ. As we say each and every time we gather in this sacred space, welcome, welcome to worship.
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. As people who celebrate our freedom, let us join in singing God of our fathers as it's printed in your bulletin. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you have taught us to keep all your commandments by loving you and our neighbor. Grant us the grace of your Holy Spirit that we may be devoted to you with our whole heart and united to one another with pure affection. Through Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. We invite any children that we have to gather with me at the altar for a brief children's moment. Good to see both of you. Oh, we have another kid joining us, too. Perfect. Kids of all sizes and shapes. So how are you today? Hmm? In ages. I, that's right. You're never, never too old to be a kid. That's right. You're spot on. So you're doing good? What time of the year is this? Hot. So that... <laughs> 
So it's almost July the 4th. That means it's summertime, right? And what do you do in the summer? You go out in the pool. Yeah, you go out in the pool and you swim like we did yesterday, that's right. And many people enjoy something called R and R. Do you know what R and R means? What that represents? Vacations, rest and recreation. So how many of you have ever gone on a vacation or a trip? <laughs> Caleb says, I know you have. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Oh, you and your daughters. Ooh. Hmm. So maybe that means I need to go on a vacation with my son. Huh? Is that what he's saying? You and your daughters have gone on vacation. Ah, listen to that. Well, when we went on vacation, which really wasn't a vacation, I had to do something. I had to pack a suitcase. And in fact, you want to see what's in this suitcase? Well, on the top, what do I have here? A hat, right? Because you need to wear the hat to do what? Keep the sun out, okay? You want to find out what's in this suitcase? Let's see what's... A bunch of teddy bears? Maybe. And clothes? Let's see. Well, let's see. Over here, we have what? Sunscreen. You need that because so you don't get heat rash or get sunburn. That's right, especially if you go to some place that's really hot. And let's see, what do we have here? Yeah. What's this? You need that, especially if you get really hot, right? And you need, what's this? Soap. Soap. You need that with water to make sure that you are clean. That's right. Very good. Let's see what else we have in here. Let's see. It has some what? Socks and some pajamas, right? Because once you arrive at your vacation, you need to make sure that you wear something that's really comfy, right? Okay. Okay. You go to sleep, and then, of course, you may want to change your socks. You may want to wear something that's stylish like that, or <laughs> like that. I like those, okay? Uh, maybe, okay, and these are what? Jeans. And someone was surprised that I actually owned a pair of jeans. Okay? And you've got to have, what, some, huh? Some tidy, tidy whities, okay? <laughs> All right, my brother. <laughs> okay, you got to have more than one pair of those tidy whities, right, Deacon? That's right, okay. And then maybe uh, if you want to be stylish, okay, you may want to wear a polo shirt. Okay? How, about Ooh, how about that? So you can play some Marco Polo, exactly. The khakis, exactly, very good. Okay, and I do have a pair of shorts, okay? And then I have some really cool shirts. Check that out. Yeah, right, Hawaii. So maybe I want to go to Hawaii, okay? And then... Place dresses, so you've got to wear a pair, you know, gaiters with you, okay, right? And then if you're going to go hiking, right, you wear those type of shoes. And again, if you're going to go swimming, that's right, okay, sandals. And then, right, what's in here? Exactly, some cologne, okay, just in case you're going out, all right, smell good, all right. And then, because you're going on a vacation, oh yes, you have to have a toothbrush and razor. And because you're going on vacation, you've got to take your laptop with you, right? <laughs> Why are you shaking your head no? <laughs> <laughs> and you're on vacation, so you want to capture all the memories, so you have to have a camera, right? 
Yep. And then over here, more stuff. Because you're a good Episcopalian, you got to take your prayer book with you, right? And then what's one thing that I haven't mentioned? You got to take some wallet that has some money in it, right? All of these things to go on a vacation, on a trip. Wow, we. <laughs> Looks like I'm prepared. Well, guess what? When you go back, I didn't write exactly. I needed glasses, like sunglasses. That's right, absolutely. So you don't blind your eyes. Well, here's the thing. You're going to hear a story about Jesus when he sent out his, his, his followers. There were 70 of them. And he sent them out two by two. And he said, you're going to go on a mission trip of sorts. And guess what you need to, to take with you? No purse, no bag, no shoes or sandals. The only thing you need to take with you is the message of the love of God and God's peace. That's what you call traveling light. Friends, friends, whenever you go forth through this place, whether you're on a vacation or whether you're just in your neighborhood, always remember to travel light, but be sure to share and spread God's love and peace with everyone you meet. Now, here's the challenge. Do you think I can get all of this stuff back in... <laughs> I've got some people shaking their heads out there in the congregation saying, mm -mm, mission impossible. Well, uh, Judy said, I can do it, but it maybe took both of us uh, just kind of, you know, <laughs> standing on it, laying on it to get everything back in there to close it. So we'll just kind of leave it here for now. And maybe at the end of the service, I can get all of that stuff back in that little suitcase. And maybe I can have one of you help to, to carry it out to my car and load it up. Would you be willing to do that? <laughs> well, before you do that, um, let's pray together our children's sending prayers. It's found on page five in your bulletin. <laughs> the Lord be with you. Let us pray together. Oh, loving God, we release our children to a time of children's chapel as they explore their faith through sharing of Bible stories. Be with them in the sacred time of wonder and prayer. May they sense both your constant presence and your love. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Thanks, friends. And remember, I'm going to keep you to your word. You said you helped me, what, carry this back to my, to my car. That's right. Thanks a lot. And we invite you to follow Miss Suzanne to a children's shop. And we'll see you back here when we share the peace. Thanks, friends. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Galatians. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For you reap whatever you sow, and if you sow to your own flesh, you will reap corruption from the flesh. But if you sow to the Spirit, you will reap eternal life from the Spirit. So let us not grow weary in doing what is right, 
for we will reap at harvest time if we do not give up. So then, whenever we have an opportunity, let us work for the good of all, and especially for those of the family of faith. See what large letters I make when I'm writing in my own hand. It is those who want to make a good showing in the flesh that try to compel you to be circumcised, only that they may not be persecuted for the cross of Christ. Even the circumcised do not themselves obey the law, but they want you, not, they want you to be circumcised so that they may boast about your flesh. May I never boast of anything except the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. For neither circumcision nor uncircumcision is anything, but a new creation is everything. As for those who will follow this rule, peace be unto them and mercy and upon the Israel of God. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord the Lord appointed 70 others and sent them on ahead of him in pairs 
to every town and place where he himself intended to go. He said to them, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Go on your way. See, I am sending you out like lambs into the midst of wolves. Carry no purse, no bag, no sandals, and greet no one on the road. Whatever house you enter, say first, peace to this house. And if anyone is there who shares in peace, your peace will rest on that person. But if not, it will return to you. Remain in the same house, eating and drinking whatever they provide, for their laborer deserves to be paid. Do not move about from house to house. Whenever you enter a town and its people welcome you, eat what is set before you, cure the sick who are there, and say to them, The kingdom of God has come near to you. But whenever you enter a town and they do not welcome you, Go out into its street and say, Even the dust of your town that clings to our feet, we wipe off in protest against you. Yet know this, the kingdom of God has come near. Whoever listens to you, listens to me. And whoever rejects you, rejects me. And whoever rejects me, rejects the one who sent me. The seventy returned with joy, saying, Lord, in your name, even the demons submitted to us. He said to them, I watched Satan fall from heaven like a flash of lightning. See, I have given you authority to tread on snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing will hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice at this, that the spirits submit to you, that rejoice that your names are written in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. I speak to you in the name of our life-giving, loving, and liberating Lord, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. So, some 12 years ago, when I began here at St. Augustine, I lifted up an E-word, and that E-word was excellence. I said we don't have to be the largest thing on the block because we are surrounded by what I call Goliaths. Um, Quail Springs Baptist Church across from us at that time, Quail Springs Church of Christ, and then right next to us, our neighbor, St. Elijah. I said we don't have to be the largest thing on the block, but we sure as hell better sparkle. And the um, senior warden at that time was Bill Collins, and he can testify to that fact, that the E word for the first two years was excellent. We need to make sure that everything we do is done with a sense of and then I began to make a shift when we realized we were going to make it after all. 
that we can now switch to another E word which gives Episcopalians pause. And that E word is evangelism. And I think it's something akin. Do you remember that wonderful scene in the movie The Lion King when Scar hears that word Mufasa, right? Say it again. Exactly. Yes, say, say it again. Mufasa. Okay, you mentioned the word um, evangelism to Episcopalians. It's just like that. Like someone just threw a, a bucket of cold water on you. Evangelism, right? That's a dirty word in the Episcopal Church. Right? We don't like to talk about evangelism because everyone who needs to be here is already here. <laughs> to our parents. Stay with me, my brothers and sisters. Today's gospel reading, Jesus does what? He sends out the 70, two by two, sort of like the animals in the ark, right? He sends them out on a head, on a mission. And he gives them specific instructions. Carry no purse, no bag, not even an extra pair of pumps, okay? You ladies should have caught on to that, right? Greet no one on the road. One translation says basically travel light. There's a great sense of urgency, expediency to the task that's at hand. And Jesus sends these 70 out on an evangelical mission. Now, some of you know that I just came back from um, a mission trip. Really, it was, it, was, it was a pilgrimage. And someone asked, well, did you enjoy your time away, Father? Was it a vacation? And I think uh, my brother, um, Jesse, can testify to the fact, as he did at the first service, it was no vacation. Trust you me, when you have to look after all of those youths. Okay? <laughs> Making sure they're in the right place at the right time, right? And that they get to bed, that they get to bed, that they get to bed at a decent hour. Because why? You have to wake up at the crack of dawn. In fact, one person on our mission trip who's responsible for um, planning them says, I think the next mission trip is going to be with adults. But it was really was a pilgrimage of sorts. We had an opportunity to go to the Navajo land and to speak and see wonderful sights. We didn't get a chance to speak to, to all the folks we wanted to or the elders, but we did come away um, from that pilgrimage with an understanding, hopefully, prayerfully, to respect the differences and the culture of other people, even the way they think about God. We had an opportunity to, to have some comparing and contrasting of something as simple as rudimentary, or rudimentary as, as the creation narrative, that creation myth, the story, the way we look at it from a Judeo-Christian um, perspective, and the way that people, indigenous people, look at the creation story or myth. And we saw what is Similar and what's different. And that's not to say that our way is right. That means yours must be wrong. No, I pray that the adults and the youth in the 2022 pilgrimage came away with an understanding, a grasp to embrace all peoples, whatever they may or may not believe because we're all on a spiritual journey together. And maybe that has something to do with our scripture passage assigned for this Lord's Day. Back to that bad word, that cuss word in the Episcopal Church. And what is it? Very good, you're with me. Because to be evangelical is a word that carries a lot of baggage with it. Making a tie here, folks. A lot of baggage these days, right? The word causes a lot of anxiety. It's a term that's widely cast to, to describe Christians who hold conservative values and much to the chagrin of progressive Christians. And it seems to be the only version that we see and we hear about on social media today, right? At least that we hear, we see regularly. 
evangelical is a word that conjures up images of, of people handing out tracts or megaphones on street corners or, or waving around a, a floppy leather-bound Bible traveling from door to door and knocking. And when you hear that knock, you do what? You draw the curtains closed or maybe you do what I did when I was younger, hide up under the kitchen table, assuming that they would go away. Talk about being evangelical. You think of people dancing in the spirit of tip revival. Yes, let's have that next year, St. Augustine. What say you? I didn't think I'd give the amens to that. <laughs> and in our pluralistic society, we just don't know what to do or to think about our call to be evangelists anymore. And all of us are called to be an evangelist, even in the Episcopal Church. Hence, that's why our presiding bishop, the Right Reverend Michael Curry, has been pushing the, the understanding that because of our baptism into Christ, death and resurrection, we have been called to be evangelists. Uh-oh. Each and every one of us as one of my colleagues said, if the Episcopal Church doesn't wake up and understand that, we will become a footnote in history, the once great Episcopal Church. Doesn't sound like things that we do here, right? But maybe it's good that many Christians are no longer comfortable with the centuries-long arrogance of the Christian church, claiming that those who do not know Christ are condemned to hell forever. That may not be a popular message here in the buckle of the Bible belt, right? Because truth be told, my friends, for more than a millennia and a half, the call to share Christ's good news with the world has been warped by our need to control others and dominate them. Listen real close to what I'm about to say now. You might not like it, but it's the truth. The church endorsed war, colonization, the appropriation of indigenous lands and destruction of rich and beautiful cultures all over the world in the name of making disciples, evangelism. But thanks be to God, there are some of us who understand and indeed have moved beyond that. There's always grace. There's always another chance. There's always an opportunity to begin again. There's always a time in which you can get on the right path. I know I'm in here by myself, but that's okay. So you ask this question, but if doing evangelism is not about saving others, because the truth be told, God is the one who does the saving or controlling others because Christ says that we shouldn't do that, then how or what are we to do, good Father? What are we to do with our neighbors who might be Jewish or Hindu or Muslim or atheist or any number of other positions of faith or on any other number of spiritual paths? We know that our job is to show and to express and to live into the love of Christ. Dare to be gracious and kind to our neighbors, to respect the differences indeed, honor other people's faith, as dare to seek a dialogue with the other person. And you may find out that you have more in common than the things that separate you. But is that enough? Are we to run away from the gospel mandate that's found in today's scripture? What does that word evangelism mean for us? Well, first of all, let's go back to its origins. It's a Greek word, 
which at the root of the word is evangelion. I have one theologian who's out there, another theologian who's right here, who can testify that I'm speaking the truth. It simply means good news or the gospel. Evangelion, the evangelism, evangelist. Good news. We have something of importance. Guess what? Da, 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 news flash. We have some good news to share with the world. That's why we're here. We believe that the message of Christ is still relevant today. That there is still a real need in our world that requires our attention and the hope that comes from God. Jesus. Jesus provides two phrases for the 70 to declare. First phrase is this. Say, peace to this house. Repeat after me. Peace to this house. Very good. You're halfway there. The other phrase is just as simple. God is near. There's no salvation formula, no value judgments. So where did we come up with that from, doctor? Hmm. No coercion tactics, just words of unity and comfort, just do -do 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 good news. First thing is there to speak a word of peace, shalom to greet people in whatever house they enter with peace be to this house. Isn't that beautiful? I mean, whenever I have an opportunity to, to get together with, with my colleague, Imam and Chasi, all Muslim friends do this. They greet each other instinctively with salam alaikum. Peace be upon you, my brother. And the response is, Wa Allah kam salam. Peace be with you and upon you and upon your household. As he says, peace be with you, my brother from another mother. Assalamu alaikum. Wow. Why have Christians abandoned this key part of Jesus' instructions? How might the Christian witness in the world have been different if our first words were whenever we met someone, wherever we went, peace be with you. At the very least, maybe it would have prevented the church from killing millions of people over the centuries. So you've got to ask the question, what does that mean for, to you personally, beginning there with your neighbor? Offer the gift of peace to whomever you meet. Jesus says, sometimes it'll be returned, and that's a blessing. Hip, hip, hooray. And sometimes, guess what? It won't be. Jesus says, you still say, peace be with you, even then. So how do you be an evangelist? The first thing is to offer what? Peace. And the second thing Jesus says, it's just as simple, proclaim that God's reign is near to you. And the last piece is, it's, it's simple it's, 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 it's part of the evangelism task. God is near and God can heal. Uh, God's reign is real and it, it will make a difference in the world. In fact, in a few moments, we will say as we gather around that sacred altar table, your kingdom come on earth as it is is in heaven. In other words, your kingdom come. It's breaking in our midst even right now. You may not believe it. You may not even be able to see it, but guess what? The kingdom of God is here and now the kingdom of God is breaking in on a world of evil and war and hatred and grief in the person of Jesus. That's why we come to the church because we believe that this Jesus helped to Show us the way to God. 
Jesus who dared to offer his life for you, for me, a life of hope, grace, mercy, and loving kindness. What kind of witness to God's love in Christ could we have made if everyone had done what Jesus says here? Again, the good news is today's another day. All of us have been given a fresh start. And today, because of our baptism into Christ's death and resurrection, we've been called and commissioned to get up and to go forth from this place and indeed proclaim that God's reign is breaking in right now. We can help to bring about that reign when we work with our neighbors of all faiths to dismantle systems of oppression and violence or maybe even standing up individually against evil or embracing our neighbor with healing kindness or indeed saying that I believe that the way of love is the way that can change this world. Indeed, I can love all of God's children, whether they're red or yellow, black, brown or white. Indeed, I can embrace all of God's children despite whatever their particular sexual orientation may be that I can join hands with all of God's children whether they're a Democrat or whether they are a Republican or an Independent or nothing that God's reign is breaking in right now and I want to be a part of bringing the kingdom to its fruition Jesus says it doesn't matter if you're rejected. Even in rejection, you still need to do all of these things and always declare this good news. Peace and God's reign is near. God's love is near. God's peace is near. God is near to us as close as traveling light because your job's not to convert it's not about making any theological assumptions about anyone's eternal status your job is to be faithful to Jesus' calling to the hope of God's love that we know in Christ and when we do that then we can be assured that we will be respectful and gracious to our neighbors of all kinds. Amen. Amen. So with people of all times and places and tongues and tribes, we profess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed found on page 7 in your bulletin. Together, we believe in one God.
Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Here we go. First step of evangelism. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Share that peace with those around us. good to see all of you here in this wonderful place of prayer and praise. And I remind you, if you've had an opportunity already to fill out the Canterbury Connection cards that are included in your bulletin, encourage you to do that, fill it out, and drop it in the rectangular wicker, ba wicker basket as it makes its way through the rows, especially if you're worshiping with us for the first time. It gives us an opportunity to let, um, let you know how pleased we are that you would worship with this community of faith this Lord's Day. So there was a challenge at, at the end of the children's moment to see if we could get all of those items um, packed um, in, in, in that small um, suitcase. And with the help of my brother Jesse, uh, we are certainly pros after last week, okay, uh, with our pilgrimage. Let's see if we can close the rest of it, okay? Uh, let's kneel on it, brother. You got to pray on this one, okay? Um, some things are done, okay, with much prayer and fasting and a little bit of wheat. <laughs> Y'all ain't praying hard enough. Come on. Somebody prayed for me, had me on their mind, took the time to pray for me. I'm so glad they prayed. You can be assured that's more than 50 pounds, my brother. You can say that we're not your ordinary church, that we can even have fun and relish in the joy of the Lord, even on this Sunday. Amen? Amen. So please receive the offertory sentence. If you're offering your gift at the altar, and there remember that your brother or sister has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go. First, be reconciled to your brother or sister, and then come and offer your gift.
The Eucharistic prayer begins on page 10 in your bulletin. The Lord is here. The is Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love you made us for yourself. When we turn away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children and brought us to sit and be to be. In Christ, you shared our life that we might live in him and he in us. He always On the night he was betrayed at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ our risen Lord. And with your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God, for you the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith, with great thanksgiving. Friends, I remind you that communion will be continuous. You are invited to come forward in two single file lines here at the head of the sanctuary to receive the bread in tinct or dipped in the wine. Please receive a napkin 
And I will dip the bread in the wine, place it up on that napkin. After you've consumed um, the untinted bread, we ask that you place the napkin in one of the two wicker receptacles on either side of the altar. If you wish to receive bread only, um, you simply need to extend your, your hands forward and the bread will be placed in the palm of your hand. It's not necessary for you to receive a napkin. If you don't wish to receive um, the bread, um, either by itself or in tincted, and want to receive a blessing, we invite you to come forward. Um, simply um, cross your arms over your chest. You'll be given a blessing and the assurance of God's presence in your life. Please note that gluten-free bread is also available for those who request it. We'll be at the direction of the ushers.
Let us pray. O oh God, whose beauty is beyond our imagining and whose power we cannot comprehend, show us your glory as far as we can grasp it and shield us from knowing more than we can bear until we look up on you without fear. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Remind you that following the blessing and the dismissal, birthday and anniversary blessings will take place in the side chapel as well as any other special prayer request that you might have. Please receive the blessing. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you, remain with you, and those whom you love, now and forever. Amen. Thanks be to God.